Good morning, everybody. This is Charles Barnett. Hope you folks are having a blessed day. I am on my way to watch a young man get baptized in Jesus' name. So I'm not doing my normal routine this morning. Hallelujah. But it's always a great thing to watch somebody uh, obey the words of Jesus. He says, Jesus said, he who believes and is baptized will be saved. Still alive, hopefully. But it is wonderful when somebody uh, ba- gets baptized in Jesus' name, when the name of our great God and Savior is pronounced, when they're dunked under the water, and that glorious uh, saving power of the blood of Jesus is applied to their soul and spirit. It's a great thing, praise God. So I'm on my way to watch somebody get baptized in Jesus' name. But I am going to give you a word from the Lord that the Lord gave me. It's just going to be on the road in my car. But um, but those of you who have been following me for the last few years, you know that uh, we are the church. Anywhere, everywhere, all the time, because that's what Ecclesia means. People full of God called out of this world to uh, do God's service. Amen. But I want to tell you something. The Lord showed me something. It's very powerful. It's in Amos, an Old Testament prophet. Amos chapter 2, verse 11 through 16. When you get a chance, read it. The book of Amos chapter 2, verses 11 through 16. And uh, the Lord will show me that the body of Christ is making the same error today that Israel did back in the days of Amos the prophet. And basically what the Lord was telling them was I gave you young ministers, young Nazarites, young prophets. And see, that's the thing is, God will always send us young generations, younger generations, because the Lord is going to continue his legacy. It doesn't start and finish with us older folk. We're just a part of the plan. Everybody's just a part of the plan. You know, and we got to realize that everything revolves around God, not us. We're a part of his plan, not our plan. He tells them, I gave you young, young uh, Nazarites and young prophets. And he goes, and you created a a terrible evil. (coughs) Excuse me. You have given the Nazarites wine to drink when they were supposed to vow. They had a vow not to drink wine. He said, but you forced them to drink wine. And you commanded the prophets not to prophesy. Now, why would people do that? Why would they do that? It's because sometimes the older generation, that includes me because I'm over 50 years old. So I'm in that. And I take this to heart. Just as I am by my heart sending it to you prophetically. Sometimes older generations will do what the Pharisees did. We'll do what the Israelites did. And that we begin to uh, go through the motions. We begin to become religious. We begin to uh, put our own uh, rules and regulations in place. We begin to set up our own traditions. Uh, We begin to uh, make everything go our way. And, you know, people, oh, I work hard to get in this position Oh, I, I sacrificed a lot. You don't know what I've been through. So I'll be here if I'm going to let somebody, some young whoopersnapper come and take my place. Man, we've lost it. When we have that kind of attitude, that mind frame, we've totally lost it. You know, we're, we're not even in the flow and the spirit of God anymore. We, I mean, when we have a relationship with God, the deeper we get, the more that we, we're supposed to decrease so that God in us can increase. That means less of us, more of him. Not the other way around. And that's the problem that's going on in the body of Christ right now. Is that the Lord said. Is that we're doing the same things. We're forcing young ministers. Young prophets and prophetesses. To bend to our will. And we're forcing them. Even suppressing and oppressing them. To disobey the Lord. To obey them. This is the way it's going to be over here. This is the way it's always been, or this is the way we brought in our change. This is how it's going to be. If you don't like it, you can get out. 
right? That's basically what the Israelites were saying to those young prophets. Well, here's what happened. The Lord brought an indictment against Israel. A woe that you're in trouble now because you've done this. He says, you have made me like I am heavily burdened and pressed under you. Now, if you think about that, nobody can suppress or oppress God. You can't do that to the Lord. Who are we? We can't suppress and oppress. Well, the Lord said, the Lord said they did. Read it. Amos chapter 2, verse 11 through 16. God said, you have suppressed and oppressed me like a cart that has all kinds of sheaves burdened on top of it. Like a heavy cart that's overfilled and he's on the bottom. That's what God said that Israel did to him. And they did it by doing it to those ministers and prophets of the Lord. And he says, because of that, he tells them, it doesn't matter how powerful you are, how rich you are, how smart you are, how strong you are. He says, you guys are going to fall. You guys are going to die. He goes, you're going to, you can't save your life. You're going to try with everything you've got and you're not going to be able to save your life. And he goes on to name off all of the skill and all of the technology and all of what Israel were able to do. And he tells them how it's going to fail, it's going to fail, it's going to fail, it's going to fail. He said, even your mightiest warriors will flee naked. Read it. Amos chapter 2, verse 11 through 16. And the Lord spoke to me and told me, this is happening in the body of Christ. The Lord has risen up a prophetic movement. A, a, and a prophetic awakening. The body of Christ began in, in the book of Acts, prophetic, and that's how it's going to end in the end time before the rapture, prophetic. You're, in the last day, saith God, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh, saith the Lord, and your sons and daughters will prophesy. Young men and old men will have dreams and visions. We know the scriptures. We know it. Joel in the book of Acts, right? And the Lord said to me today, I am done with the oppression and the suppression of people who I have blessed and I have risen them up uh, to be a blessing to the, to the church, the body of Christ, and to the world only to suppress and oppress my new wave that's coming in. The newer generation that's going to carry the torch that we're supposed to pass on to them. This apostolic, prophetic, powerful torch of the Holy Ghost, the move of God. The Lord said he is not going to tolerate the oppression and the suppression any longer. And he is going to remove those who are stumbling blocks, who are those who are just a heavy weight to him. Can you imagine that? Oh, I don't want to be that. I don't want to be a part of that. I want to be able to be a mentor to the younger generation. I'm for the apostles and the prophets and the prophetesses, the whole fivefold ministry. In Amos chapter 2, verse 11 through 16, these people were oppressing and suppressing the prophets and the Nazarites. And God said, you have burdened me, therefore you aren't going to be able to save your life. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to destroy you. I'm going to remove you. And the Lord said, that is what has come to his before his throne this day and this hour, he has given a time of grace over the past 10 years so that the older generation along with the younger generations can embrace the true word of God, the book of Acts in the New Testament, move of God, the way of the Ecclesia, the apostolic prophetic movement from the beginning, the originals, and this time of grace has ended. Those who have fought against God just like the Israelites did. Those who have oppressed and suppressed God. Kind of hard to believe that that can happen, but God said it. You have suppressed me like a like a, a wagon uh, packed up with sheaves. Overloaded and packed up, and I'm on the bottom, and I've had enough of it. You see, what we don't realize is that when we reject the apostles, we reject the prophets, we reject evangelists, we reject pastors, we reject teachers, we re 
reject the, those who are witness and a testimony of Jesus Christ that are sent by him, when we reject them and oppress them and suppress them, we aren't doing it to those people. We think we are, but we are doing it to the one who they have been sent by. We are doing it to Jesus Christ, our mighty God and Savior. By the way, look in the book of Revelation chapter 4. Jesus is the only one sitting on the only throne in heaven. He's the Lord of all. So let's not oppress and suppress our God. Let's not suppress and oppress and fight against his prophetic messengers. Because thus saith the Lord, God is done with it. And today is the day that he's going to release, release a woe, his wrath. And he's going to bring those who fight against him and his end time movement, he's going to bring them to naught. He's going to take away everything that he gave them. He's going to strip them of all the blessings that he had given them because they didn't get it themselves. He's the one that gave. He's the one that raises up and brings down. And he's going to show forth this day and this hour. You're going to start to see it starting today because we cannot suppress and oppress the apostolic prophetic move of God nor those who he has sent to proclaim his message, to prophesy what thus saith the Lord. This is the day it has been enacted. It is a proclamation, a declaration, and a decree. It is a prophetic word sent throughout the entire body of Christ worldwide, and you will begin to see it happen in Jesus' name. Thus saith the Lord. Go to Amos chapter 2, verse 11 through 16. And let's search our hearts, let's search our minds, and let's say, God, I don't want to be an oppression and suppression to you or to anybody else. Let's repent. Let's turn away from this evil, wicked way. Let's turn away from our ways to obey the ways of the Lord, to obey his word, his written word, to obey the prompting of his spirit, to obey the sent fivefold ministry. If we don't... We're going to be on the wrong side of that woe. We're going to be on the wrong side of that wrath. And it's a thus saith the Lord. This is Charles Barnett from Apostolic Gatherings Network. And you be blessed. Share this message. It will come to pass. It has been proclaimed. Thus saith the Lord. Time to repent. Time to obey what thus saith the Lord. God bless you. You be blessed. Share this and take it to heart. Because this is the real deal. In Jesus' name, God bless you.